Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He's worthy of all the shouts and praises. Come on, make a shout unto the Lord. Come on.
Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We magnify you, Jesus. There is none like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. We love your name, God. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your worship right now. He's the Lord of Lords. He's making a way where the sneeze seems to be no way. He's a faithful God. Mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do, and bodies are still being raised, and giants are still being slain. God, we believe, yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Say our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Cause we need a move. We need a move. We need a move. When you move, healing is 
coming in this room Miracles happen when you move Heaven is coming Declare and say
you made our way you were there was no way and I believe I see you do it again I've seen you move you move the mountains and I believe I see you do it again you never fail you never fail God and I believe see you your promise your promise still stands great, great is, your faith is your faithfulness Father Lord we stand in the midst of your faithfulness oh God our families our businesses still in your our church hands. our nation our generation our children we all stand in, in the midst of your faithfulness oh God come on say one more time and Lord we come here this morning we worship you and we declare that your promise will never fail us you never fail us oh God Father Lord move in our midst move in our lives move in our lives oh God move in our lives King of all glory we declare that anything the barrier anything the portal that the devil has put in front of us oh God you are making a way you are making a way you are making a way oh God for us Jesus Christ and we love God still in your head still in your this is my Wow, what a session. Thank you so much to the praise and worship uh, team. Thank you to the singers, to the musicians, to the people behind the camera. We love your ministry and we appreciate you. Big shout out to Rev Bob, our youth pastor. Thank you for that session. And Brother Victor, thank you for leading us so well. I know that you have been blessed and you've been shouting and screaming and just celebrating what God is doing in your life. I'm Pastor Pauline Jaroge of Higher Heights Church UK. And I'm Pastor Peter Kamau. And we welcome you to this online church. We welcome you if you're a first time viewer, let us know where you're watching us from in the comment section. And we really appreciate you if it's your second time, your third time, thank you so much. Higher Heights Church family, we love you, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in and we pray that even as we continue with this church without walls, that you are connecting and being blessed with what is happening. Mm. Now it is that time that now we are going to go to listen to the word of God. The last two weeks we had Pastor Oscar who had been a, such a tremendous great blessing to us. And today we have none other but Pastor Leverend, sorry, Leverend Becky Baraka a great friend of this ministry yeah. and uh, we have uh, she has ministered to us several times oh, not, uh, loads of times loads of times she's part and parcel of, uh, of us i mean uh, she, a beautiful sister that's our right. friend a yeah. covenant sister yeah. she uplifts us she upholds us she loves us and we thank god for her life and we are very actually actually you know we she ministered to you ladies yes last yes weekend. she was our guest speaker at, yeah. uh, at the glow event uh, the other weekend yeah, yeah. thank well, you pastor ben I was by the side listening to all her message and it was quite uplifting, quite, you know, powerful. And we are so glad today. We share the same father. Yes. Yeah. Bishop J.B. Masinde. Masinde. And thank you so much, Reverend Becky. We are waiting to hear what God has put in your hand. Just take it on and just bless the people of God. We we'll love you. Our ears are open to hear how God and what God is speaking to us through you. Take it on. Amen. What a pr great privilege and honor to be together with you on this great Sunday morning. I really want to thank God for High Heights Church. And I really want to thank God for Reverend Peter and Pauline. 
great friends, great ministers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Great to be with you in the vineyard because this is where God has put us together. It's a great blessing just to know that God gets us from different places and unites us. And that is why he can unite us together with saints at High Heights Church. This morning, I'm looking at what God has done in our lives and just desiring to see the position of God in our lives and what he is to us, who he is to us, and where we place him in our lives. Allow me to speak to you this morning about putting God first. And you know, God must be first in all. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter where you are. But God must come first in everything that you are doing. Allow me to read the scripture because I read a scripture in Exodus chapter number 15. And I'm reading verse number 11. It says, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. This is how Moses describes God in the book of Exodus. He begins by declaring that who is like him? Who can we compare him to? We can't compare God to anyone. He goes ahead to declare that he is the God among all other gods. In that matter, there is no one that comes first apart from God. God the God of the Bible. He comes first. He does great and mighty things. And that is why he remains God in everything. He's fearful in praise, doing wonders. That is the God I want to talk to us about. And when you look at Exodus chapter number 20 and verse number 3, the Bible says, you shall have no other gods before me. This God being first in our lives, he doesn't want us to put any other thing before him. There is nothing we can compare to him. There is nothing we can say comes ahead of our God. You must learn to put God first in your life. And especially for us who are Christians, putting God first means our spirituality has everything to do with God. There is nowhere else you can place God as far as our spiritual life is concerned. We must get to a place of understanding. He is the one that works out our spiritual life. Who else can work out your spiritual life? The Bible says God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. What does that mean? He is the only one that can help us go through our daily life. That why, that's why, brethren, you need to understand that God needs the first place in our lives. There are many things that we can value. There are many things that we may think are important to us. But the place that God requires in our lives is the first place in our lives. Once he, be, he, he, he takes the first place in our lives. Everything else will add unto, uh, unto him. Friends, you know what happens? If you don't put God first, you can try many other things, but you won't really get somewhere with whatever you are, you are trying. And that is why you just learn to place God first in your life because he is the one that gives us this life that we have and everything else falls upon him. Blessed is his name because he remains God to us. I would like to echo the words of Pastor Pauline. Pastor Pauline echoes great words when he talks the, about the word fast, and especially she loves doing acronym. And when she puts it, I like the way she puts it. Fast meaning that God must be fast in our finances. That is for us. He must be fast in our interests. That is I. He must be fast in our relationships. That is R. He must be fast in our spirituality. That is, that is S. And he must be fast in our time. So when you look at the word fast, it means we must put God first in everything that you are going to do in life. That is why I love my God, the God of the Bible. I know people may look at other gods in different ways, but the God of the Bible, dear friends, he desires the first place in our lives. He does not look for anything else. When you don't put him first, you miss everything else in our lives. We must begin by asking ourselves, which place does God take in our lives? Where do we see God? God in our lives. Why? Because, you know, as Christians, there are many things we are doing, and especially in this season that we are in. Friends, as I speak to us this morning, think about the season that we are in. It is a season that has come with different issues, a season that has come with different things, and it is very easy to get God out of his place and put other things in the place of God. So I want you to understand that you must give God his first place and let him come before everything else. And you will rejoice that you've come to know the Lord. There are things that we value. 
And all of us listening to me today, wherever you are listening to me from, you know the things we value in life. And the things that we value, we make them a priority. Why do we make them a priority? They matter. They are very great things. You want to see them happen. And that is why they become a priority. They are important. They become a priority. For example, I know as much as I'm saying we must put God first, there are those who have missed it in some ways. Mothers must put their children first. If you want to have a problem with a mother, deal with their children, and you will realize their children have taken a place in their lives. And let me make this as a joke, you know, fathers... They value their, their wallet. If you, you are found carelessly handling that wallet, they may have a problem with you. But you know what? All those things, as important as they are, they're not supposed to take the first place in your life. Because if you put your finances first, you miss God. If you put your children first, you miss God. It is God who helps us deal with all this in his own way. So as much as we have things that value, I want you to know, friends, you must value God and put him first in your life. And that is why you realize Moses was asking the, the children of Israel in Exodus, who is like our God? In other words, he's beyond comparison. Who can you compare him to? You need to get to a place of understanding. He takes the first place in our lives. He takes priority. That is why we consider him greatly. And that is why we give him the first place before anything else. Does that mean we don't value other things? We do. Does that, value you don't, that, does that mean you don't value your life? You do. Does it matter that, does it mean you don't value what you, you do in your place of work, in your home, in your relationships? No. It matters that you put him first so that he can be able to deal with you in all those other areas. So friends, God takes priority in our lives. And because he takes priority, we must know, even if we're going to deal with relationships, our first relationship is the relationship we have with God. As he takes first place, he must take the priority of having a relationship with you. you having a relationship with God, you will realize and notice he's our father. God is a father, and a father is the one that keeps his children. That is why even in the Lord's Prayer, you pray, our father who art in heaven. In other words, above everything else, even when you want to speak, he must take his first place. He is the only God. We call him the Alpha and the Omega the author and the finisher. So I don't know where you could put other things. If God becomes the alpha, if he becomes the omega, you can be sure there is nothing else that can take his place. He is the creator of all, the God of the Bible. Friends, you can do anything else, but don't miss it that God must take the first place in your life. And if he takes the first place in your life, it doesn't matter what difficulties you may face. It doesn't matter how life may look like, but God will always be God in everything that he does. And you will be able to accept that he is the first one in my life. What a blessing. What a privilege to know that God has his place. His sovereignty is worthy our worship. Why am I saying that? When God is above everything, he's sovereign. You, you know what? You can try anything else and you still have to come back to God. What have you been trying? What have you been putting in your life? Remember the sovereignty of God. He comes before anything else unto us. This season... I was looking at it, friends, and I realized if we are not very careful, we can lose the place of God in our lives. And that is why me and you must take care on how we handle issues, on how we come across life, on our daily life. We must really look around and, and know where is God? You know, there is a place God was in your life before COVID-19. And there is a place where God is now. You need to take stock and ask yourself, is God still first in my life? It is important to each one of us to know that uh, emotionally and, and spiritually, we are not where we were before COVID-19. We have moved. People move in, in their emotions. People move in their spiritual life, even in physically. The things you, you valued, you do not have them. Why? Because something has happened. They, there are things that have been shaking around our lives. And that is one thing that you need to look at and ask yourself, where is God? Is he still the first one in my life or I've changed him? A lot has happened with all the regulations that we have. And I'm thanking God for regulations. You know what? Fre friends, regulations are good. 
And why are they good? Because it is for your good and it's for the good of the others. In, in, in what I mean by that is that when we keep these regulations that have been given to us by governments, by health officials, by people around us who really care about our lives, they give those regulations not to make sure that you fail, but to make sure that even at the end of COVID-19, you're still a blessing to your family, to your church, and everyone else around you. So we need to be careful with how it can affect our Christian life. It can, it can really affect your Christianity. And how does that do? Because, you know, when you come ac across the regulations, you've been told, keep social distance. And that is a good regulation. You've been told, stay at home. A good regulation. Wash your hands. All these things are very, very important to us as Christians. But you need to understand they can affect our spiritual life and our relationship with God. And one of the jokes that I've been making lately, and let me just pass it to you. It may look a joke, but for me, it is a really serious thing. We are talking about keep social distance. And one of the things I've been telling us, in order for our, our spiritual life to get better, make sure you keeping spiritual distance from sin. You are not uh, near sin. Your social distance with sin is a distance that you cannot meet with it at all. And I'm saying that as you keep away from people, keep away from sin. It will continually show that you are valuing God in your life. We talk about washing our hands. I'm saying wash your hearts. Let your hearts be cleansed because the power of the blood draws us closer to him. He's fast in our place. He washes us from all iniquities. Dear friends, Friends, that is one thing that you need to know. When he says stay at home, I'm saying stay in the presence of God. He's the first one in your life. As much as you will stay and do all things that you want to do, stay in the presence. That is where you will be able to find what you are looking out for, dear friends. That is a, a blessing for me. And as you do that, I just want you to know that God is blessing you. All those other things, we are doing them for our good and for our, good, for our personal welfare which is a very good thing for the, for the welfare of your friends, of your relatives, and people around you. You do not want them to get into that trouble. And that is why I'm saying, even you as a, a person that knows and loves God, you need to know how to keep these regulations as far as the Bible is concerned. This spiritual, this, 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 this social, sorry, I, I want you to get this right. This social distance is not meaning that you need to be isolated. Because it, when you look at the social distancing, it's cost many people to get into social isolation. Just because you, you cannot attend a weekly gathering every Sunday because we were used to it as a church and now you can't, change, uh, you can't attend those weekly gatherings does not mean you disconnect from your maker. Does not mean you disconnect from God. What it means is God still takes his first place in your life. Some people have distanced themselves, have disconnected with God just because of what? Because that is what is supposed to be happening. Friends, we may not gather physically, but God is calling us and he has given us different things so that we can do and keep our spiritual distance with him, be able to remain spiritually right with him. Friends, in this life, as much as you have other things that will happen, remember your spiritual life is very, very important. And because it is important, I want you to know you must keep keen to your spiritual life so that you, you are on the right track and you are taking care of how you live in service of God. Friends, take care that the enemy doesn't come to you during this period and tell you you are only, the only one around. No one is seeing you. No one knows what you're doing. You've been, you are not being preached to. You are not finding people to, to do different things with. No. Keeping that in mind. No, your spiritual life is key. Keep it in the right place. Make sure you are keeping the track. You are not losing what God has given to you. If God is first, you must then keep your relationship. You can't keep away from him. And I have a question. How, have you, have, how has your relationship with God been? In these few months that you've not had a, a, a physical gathering, is your relationship still in place? 
Are you just going through life and saying, until, until I see another day? That is not what God is calling you for. He says, he is the first place in your life. So give him that place by putting your spiritual life online with him because you must grow spiritually. You can't remain at home and remain in other places and say, we're not growing because we stopped gathering. No, your spiritual life must continue to grow so that you can do what God has called you to do. That's why you realize in our churches, we have got online services. Why do we have online services? For the sake of your spiritual life. Why do we have our small groups continuing on? Because of our spiritual lives. Friends, it is important for you to connect with an online service. Like the one we are talking right now. You must make sure you know the timings. Get into an online service because you want to grow your spiritual life. Connect with a small group. Know how other people are doing. Let them speak into your life. Your spiritual life will continue to get to, get to where God wants it to be. But if you keep away, then you are missing what God wants you to to do. Be intentional in your prayers. Because if you're not intentional, you will feel you're alone and you do not want to pray. Keep uh, your prayer life on fire. Because that is what God is calling you for. He also is calling you for a life of medication, meditation and that is Bible study. So when you do all these things, what you are valuing is your spiritual life, putting God first, and you want to grow in him according to his word. So dear friends, keep this in mind, that God must take his first place. You can do many other things, but don't leave uh, the things that bring glory to God in your life. You must connect with your maker. Every day of your life, every minute of your life, connect with your maker. Don't just go do activities just because you have time. And you tell people, I have all this time in my hands. I don't know what to do about them. I want you to know you have that time. Use it to grow your spiritual life. Some of you, you may understand, you say, you used to have many shifts. A shift after another. Your spiritual life suffered. Maybe this is an opportunity that God has given you to grow your spiritual life because you're not running to a, uh, after shift to another, from a job to another. No, it is a moment to grow your spiritual life in God. Concentrate on the tasks and the activities that will bring joy and peace in your life. Why am I saying this, friends? Get to know church that our peace and joy is found in God. It is how you connect with him that will make you achieve your joy and your peace in life. Connect with God. Connect with your maker. Give him a place in your life and you will not regret about that. Those activities that will bring joy to you, that will fulfill your purpose for being. All of us has, have a purpose and this purpose you must be able to fulfill it. So don't just go through life. Fulfill purpose. Don't say I have time on my hands. I don't know what to do with it. Grow your spiritual life and God God will continue to bless you. This morning, that is my word for you, dear friends, that we need to take a time and begin to take stock of our spiritual life, where we are with God, because God wants you to do something greater. We need to have a word to give to the hopeless world. The world is becoming hopeless because they don't know what to do. In this case, blessed be you who knows that you can look upon God and you can be able to see what God is doing in your life. Learn during this period to draw near to God. That is the best you can do. Draw near to God. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Draw near to God. You've been wanting a great relationship with him. Draw near to God during this season and you will be able to see the greatness of God in your life. View COVID-19 as an opportunity and not just as a challenge. For you who wants to grow your Christian life, if you look at COVID-19 as an opportunity, you realize the times when you want to read your Bible, you didn't have time. But now you have it. Seek to read the Bible. God speaks to us through his word. You need to know this is the time you can hear God clearly for yourself. You will not wait for, for your pastor. You will not wait, wait for your leaders, but you have time with God. It's an opportunity for you to hear the voice of God. It is an opportunity for you to soak yourself in prayer, calling upon the name of the Lord. Remember in prayer, we talk to God and he talks to us. So this is an opportunity for you to talk to God, take taking time to know what he's doing for you, taking time to understand what he's saying. Invest in this opportunity and you will give God all the glory. Allow God to do what he can do. In, in this, I just mean increase your prayer life. 
That time you used to, you know, you could jump out of bed and you're off. But this time you can have time. Increase it. If you used to pray for 10 minutes, can you be able to pray for 30? Can you be able to pray for an hour? Can you be able to, to have a devotion with God where you sit, he, you, you, he talks to you through his word. You talk to him in prayer and you will remain focused in your spiritual life. Your spiritual disciplines are things you cannot part from. You know, as a Christian, if you don't pray, you're missing your Christian discipline. If you don't read the word of God, you are missing your Christian discipline. So these ones will work well during this opportunity that God has given you. It is a time, and I love this, this statement that I just want to make. It is a time away from people, but closer to God. Away from people. Those who used to disturb you, things that used to happen, they are away from you. But now you can grow closer to God. There's another thing I thought. It is a time of not being out of the noise of the world and be, take, allowing your ear to be closer to the mouth of God. Dear friends, use this opportunity to hear God for yourself. You must hear him. You must allow him to speak. And you must allow him to do what he's doing. Where are you? in your Christian work. I may be talking to you who, who, who even haven't decided to begin to put God first in your life. You've put you, your money first. It has failed you. You've put your family. It has broken. You put a lot of things as the things that have taken priority in your life. And because of doing that, you've missed a lot of things. You've missed a lot of opportunities. You've not been able to see God work through you because it has been frustration. Look at it from this point of view. There are families that were closer together before COVID-19. But uh, when COVID-19 came, things began to happen because there was less money. There began to be misunderstandings. Marriages are breaking. Why? Because God is not fast in their lives. I want to offer you a solution today. For your marriage to work, you need God. For your family to remain intact, you need God. For your finances to remain working, you need God. Put God fast in your life. During this time, you need to increase the time of your prayer. Your prayer time must increase. And why am I saying that it might increase? It's because the first thing you need to do, especially in the morning, you need to speak to God before you speak to men. That is what matters a great deal. I don't know who you've been speaking to. And that is why maybe things haven't been going the way you expected them to go. Speak to God before you speak to men. And things will improve in your life. Stay focused in your spiritual disciplines, like I've said. Spiritual disciplines include your prayer time. And you know what, friends, if you increase your prayer time and you increase your moments with God, you will be working out a way of developing and building and growing your spiritual life. And God will bless you in it. I pray that you will be able to keep away from people like we are doing social distance, but be closer to God. Keep away from people, but be closer to God. Away from, uh, from all the distractions, away from all the noise of the world, but closer in hearing God and knowing what God is saying about your life. You must hear God for yourself. Dear friends, I will repeat that again. Do not depend on people hearing God for you. Many of us in this season, we are losing it. Why? We waited for people to speak to us about what God is saying. We waited waited for people to read the Bible for us. But we've been out of gatherings and many of us are wondering what to do. The best is hear God for yourself. When you hear God for yourself, you will be able to build your spiritual life and your spiritual disciplines will continue to grow within you. I want you to know, dear friends, you can build many things. But the things you are building, if you build them without God, you will miss it. But if you build them with God, you will be able to make it. So build things that matter for your life. Build things that build your Christian life. Build on things that will increase your, your time with God. And when you do that, it matters. Your spiritual life will be better than it has been ever since COVID-19 began. COVID-19 should not distract you from God. COVID-19 should not disconnect you from the purposes of God for your life. COVID-19 should not make you begin to ask, where is God in all this? If that has been your question, find God for yourself.
Give him the first place. Allow him to rule and lead and guide your life. Dear friends, it is important to know God comes first. So in all that we do, one of the things I would want to let you know as I come to a close is we need a personal relationship with God that is with Jesus Christ. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to know you've not given God your first place. Giving your life to Christ means not just knowing him. You know, there are people that will know you, but they have never seen you. They've only heard about you. Knowing you does not mean that I have had to a closer walk with you. So I'm pleading with each and every one of us, build your relationship with God. Allow him to be your Lord and your Savior. He, allow him to take the first place in your life. Allow him to lead and guide your life. God being first, everything will come in place with him. Jesus is calling upon someone during this period and saying, don't go through this period alone. Don't go through this period depending on men. Don't go through this period depending on your money. You know what? The economies of the world have been affected. That means your own economy has been affected. And when, you know, I love what Psalms chapter number 11 and verse number three, you know what it says? When the foundations are shaken, what shall the righteous do? And there are things that have been shaken in our lives. As Christians, as men and women that live in this world, there are things that have been affecting us. Every one of us, whether we were wealthy or not wealthy, whether we were poor or not poor, there are things that have been affecting us. The foundations have been shaken. What will you do? Put God first and you will be excited that you did that. Our goal should be God first, everything next. That is the word I have for us this morning. And I'm just about to pray with somebody. I don't know where you are. I will challenge you. Where is God in your life? What place have you given God in your life? How are you running your life during this period? If you say yes to Jesus, you will be able to give him your first place. So for you who are not born again, I want to invite you to just pray this brief prayer with me and then we'll pray for all of us. So you're not born again, you're saying, can I make Jesus the first in my life? Can I give God the first priority? I want to say, yes, you can do it. Please would you repeat this short prayer with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I give my life to you. Take the first place in my life. Forgive me from all that I have done. Allow your power to lead me. Oh God, take priority. Guide me, lead me, and bless me. Write my name in the book of life. I thank you for accepting me and receiving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you to know, you've just confessed that prayer. You've put God first in your life. And it's because he's come first, he will lead you into other things in your life. And for all of us, I know we are affected by many things during this season. And our relationship with God might have been shaken in one way or another. Allow me to pray that we will go back to the drawing board and begin to let God take his place in our lives. And be able to build our Christian life. If we are disconnected, let's connect again. If we had thought there is no gathering and that you have been just doing things on your own, it is time to revisit yourself and say, God, help me during this period to do what matters so that it is an opportunity and not just a challenge because God is concerned. Allow me to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring your people before you. They have heard my voice. They have known your position in their lives. How I pray today that you minister to them, lead them in the way everlasting, 
and let them come back to the saving knowledge of Christ. I pray, Father, where they had gone astray, bring them back. Where they had begun to let other things take your place, I pray, let them give you the priority of their lives and let everything about them glorify you. Because, Lord, without you, then who else? You've said we should not have other gods before you. We declare you are God in our lives, you are the first in our lives, and we will depend on you because you know us. I pray this, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Dear friends, take this word throughout this week. Think about it. Ponder on it. Revisit your prayer life. Revisit your Bible study. Revisit your relationship with God and see are you keeping what God wants you to keep so that your spiritual life will have gone a notch higher than where you are? God bless you. Keep well and let God minister to each one of us. Thank you. Bye for now. See you next week. What a word. Pastor Becky, we appreciate you. It is my prayer that as you have listened to that word, you are taking notes. You are listening and it was sinking deep within you. Like I always say, the word that you use, the word that you put to application is the word that is going to benefit you. There is power in the word of God. It gives life. It brings vibrancy. It brings guidance. It brings protection. Put that word to use in your life. Once again, we thank you, Pastor Becky. Thank you so much. Once again, it was amazing to hear her speaking to us for God first in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I believe when you put God first in our lives, tell you what, everything flows on well. That's right. But probably you might be listening to us right now and you are in that, 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 that position right now where you are feeling you are cornered, you're feeling that you are going through a season right now, a season that you have not anticipated, a season that have come to you as a surprise. You have been you have been feeling as if things have been weighing you down. That's why we are here because we believe in God who answer prayers. That's right. And right now I might not be able to know exactly where you are, mm. but I thank God because the Holy Spirit lives with you. Amen. And he knows exactly where you are. Amen. So we want to lift your needs together together before God and try Trust God for a miracle right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us pray for you. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you right now for every person who is listening the sound of my voice yes, right Lord. now. I want to bless you because you know us by our names. Mm. You have said in your word that you, our names are written in your book, O oh God. Mm. And there is nothing that we go through that you do not know. There are people who are listening to me right now who mm. are not feeling well. Mm. We speak a word of healing. There are people name. who are in darkness right now. Mm going a confusion of a season. Mm. Father, I pray that you become a right to them right in now. Jesus Father, there are people who need the doors to open. Yes. Thank you, Father, because you said you have the key to open a door mm. that nobody can be able to close. Yes, there Lord. are those people who are looking for provision. Yes, Thank Father. you that you are God who provided manna in the wilderness. In the Therefore, in the Jesus. area of luck, we pray, mm. may the Lord provide. In we Jesus also trust name. God for God of deliverance. Mm. There are some of you who need your children to be delivered, your yes. marriage to be delivered. Yes. We pray that God who snatches from the mouth of lion, mm. you'll be able to snatch you in the name of in the, the Lord. Name of and we Jesus. pray that from the from the virus of depression, mm. that the Lord will give you the garment of praise. Amen. That in Jesus' name, as the Bible says, that God will give you the feet of the feet of a head, mm. that you stand in the height of your challenges. Mm. I pray that you come out of victoriously mm. as the Lord fight the battles for you. Mm. I come against every work of the enemy, mm. and I declare in Jesus' name, you are more than a conqueror because Jesus is on your side Amen. and Jesus is fighting for you. Yes. May the Lord hear your prayer. May the Lord answer you mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. You may not know the Lord as a personal savior. Mm -hmm. You may not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I want to welcome you into the family of God. You have sat there. You have heard that word preached by Pastor Becky. You have heard the prayer that has been raised by Pastor Kamau and you feel a deep conviction within your heart. Do not resist. Connect to God. Mm -hmm. We want to lead you right now through a prayer of repentance and as you come into salvation and you welcome you into the family of God.
Mm. Honey, do you want to do that? Yeah. So please, if you, have, if you are in that moment right now, mm. and I believe the Holy Spirit have been speaking to you, and the Holy Spirit have been convicting you, that's how you are born again. Mm. You're not born again by repenting your sin. It's confessing Jesus Christ as your personal Amen. Savior. And the moment you do that, the Bible says that your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Mm. And that moment, you are eternally delivered from darkness and from death, and you are put into right standing with God. Mm. And this is what Jesus came for, so that he may rescue you mm. from the kingdom of darkness and transfer you to the kingdom of his dear son. Mm. So let me pray for you. Just with whisper, I remember when I gave my life to Christ, I was probably in the same condition that most of you were. I had some friends who were by my side. They, you know, I thought about what they would say about me, but I thank God I made that decision. Amen. When I made that decision, I went to my canon where I have been receiving joy and the peace and the goodness of God mm. beyond what I have ever thought or imagined. Mm. Probably you're out of your inheritance, but when you come in, God will see you in a great way. So if you are there, I want to pray for you. So please repeat these words after me. Father, Father, in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I recognize. I recognize that I am a sinner. That I am a sinner. And I want to come back to you. And I want to come back to you. Thank you for dying. Thank you for dying. On the cross. On the cross. That because of my sins. Because of my sins. You died. You died. And you became sin. And you became sin. So that I may become. So that I may become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. And right now. And right now. By faith. By faith. I receive you. I receive you as my personal savior. As my personal savior. And from today. And from today. And Entirely, entirely I commit myself to you I commit myself to from you from today from today I'm born again I am born again thank you thank you for loving me for loving me may you keep me may you keep me till you come for me till you come for me in Jesus name in Jesus name amen if you have prayed that prayer congratulations yeah. you are a child of God welcome to the kingdom of God mm. we celebrate with you we join with the angels to yeah. celebrate your great decision. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Now we have come to that moment that we give our offering unto our God. Yeah. Let me say this. If there is something I bless God for, in that season where I commit what I have into the hands of God, mm -hmm. any time you give to God, God does not take. God always give back but he tests our faith. Mm -hmm. And probably you are there like that woman who had very little oil and very little fra. And the man of God came on his life, came on her life. And when that mad man came on her life, she asked and said, give to me first, representing God. Whenever you give to God first, God multiplies. The Bible says for the next three and a half years, that little oil and that little fra did never cease. I pray right now, whatever you're going to sow in the next season of your life, yes. and probably it's not in the talking about money, any season you are, mm. may the Lord exchange that what you are giving to what you need right now. Amen. And it will not dry up in Jesus' name. So I want you to give by faith and you give with joy because God yes. loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. giver. Let's yeah. do that in Jesus' name. Worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings. Yes. There is uh, details on the screen right now. Our account details, account numbers, sort code, just use those details mm -hmm. and do an online transfer or give using whatever means you always give. God bless you for your giving. Amen. Amen. The other thing we also want to speak to you at uh, Higher Heights is because, uh, you know, last Sunday we spoke about uh, the many churches are opening. We are still working with Burnham Park. Mm -hmm. They have given us some strict instruction that uh, we cannot be able to sing even when we resume. So we are waiting to hear what more government will be able to tell us in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. Because uh, because when we are allowed to sing and because worship is a very, very important part of our worship. Mm -hmm. And right like now, that's what we are trusting God for. So pray with us because we believe as soon as that happens, then we'll be able to resume our service. But we will continue to minister you through this medium, and I believe that you God continue to minister and to bless you. Mm. Otherwise, we love you, we look forward, we are missing you, but the condition are so harsh that we are waiting for them to be loosened a little bit. Yes, and also our kids, they might be going back to school in September. Mm -hmm. If we are to meet at our location, there is a lot of restrictions where children are concerned. Mm. So as leadership, we have agreed and decided we would want to go back to our location 
once the kids are back in school. Mm. So we, as Pastor has said, we are waiting for the guidance to be updated and we know that it will be updated accordingly and uh, we know that they are going to be favorable to churches. So in the meantime, connect with us right here on this medium. We are on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, mm. we are on YouTube, uh, we are on Instagram, we are on Twitter. Connect with us and just search for Higher Heights Church UK. Remember kids ministry and teens ministry and youth ministry happens every weekend. The, the, the kids are from ages two, I believe, to up around age 12. They meet yeah. on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. The teens, they meet on Sunday mornings. And the youth, the older youth, they meet every Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. So connect with us. Drop us a line on our Facebook. Uh, uh, DM us and we will be able to give you more information for these meetings that take place via uh, Zoom. We also want to say thank you for all those people who plugged in on last week on Friday. We had a powerful, powerful time of prayer. Thank you once again for each and every one of you. Thank God for our whole, for, um, for, our, for our friend, Pastor Mike, who was still together with us. We look forward to seeing you next week on Friday. Thank God for our church, uh, our worship team, part of them. Yes. Yes, we, they we, were leading us in worship. Great job, right. guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank Beautiful you. worship. Thank you. God bless thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And also, marriage talks with Peter and Pauline. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my God. That's yeah. a ministry that God has given us. And yeah. uh, we are very glad. Yeah. Uh, when it started, it was such a challenge to me. Yeah. But, you know, I found a lot of strength and comfort just from the testimonies that are coming in. That's right. I thought that I would find it such a chore. Mm. But by God's grace and by God's help, I believe it's one of the things that I've done in ministry that I've enjoyed yeah. the most. Amen. It has given me such joy and mm -hmm. such fulfillment. And mm -hmm. Marriage Talks is a ministry for married people, people in relationships, in courtship. We do a program every Wednesday. You can catch us on Facebook, you can catch us on YouTube and at 7 p.m. Uh, British Standard Time, 7 p.m. And it's all about helping ministry uh, marriages to be transformed, to be strengthened, to be established and to be restored. So tune in to Marriage Talks. You can catch past episodes on Facebook and on YouTube. God bless you as you tune in. God bless you. Amen. To tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell a friend. Welcome. Amen. <laughs> and that's it. God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you.